What's up, Attack of the World? Jasper Gosser here, Shutterschool.com. And today, I've got a tiny flash and two big results. Two portraits that were made in the getting ready room, inside, without a lot of time, this past wedding weekend. Let's see what I made. And I'm going to show you how I made them. All right, so let's get into it. So first off, a little explanation behind the gear that I used. I have this TT350S. And this is the battery version where you can put rechargeable batteries in. There's actually another version that's got a lithium ion battery pack that's a little bit more money and I would highly recommend it because you don't have to deal with batteries. I have those as well. They are the T, um, they have a similar name but they might be something. But anyway, I got these TT350S's, Godox, because on a mirrorless camera having a big full size flash is really awkward and a pain. So as you can see if I were to put this on the camera, it's a very reasonable size and most of the time my on-carry MR flash does not need to be powerful. I'm just bouncing it, I'm just adding a little bit of fill light, I'm only going to use it when it's relatively dark. If I need a little bit more power, then my full size lights are on light stands. Give me what I need. So this thing is great. Doesn't make your camera heavy and awkward. And this one I actually broke. I have one for each camera and I think I dropped the camera and it landed on the flash and it busted the hot shoot off. So instead of throwing it away, I've got myself a little pocket flash. So I wouldn't break your hot shoe in order to have a pocket flash, but it's kind of cool to have something small that I literally can keep in my pocket on a wedding. And if I'm in a pinch and I need a light real quick, I can just hold it. And I can just hold it and get some flash action, or I could trigger it with my camera. So I'll keep, instead of having an on-camera flash on all day, which I don't necessarily want, I'll just have my trigger on all day because it's lighter and less awkward than having the big flash. And then I, if I just need it real quick, I can just pop it out of my pocket and then hold it or have somebody else hold it. So I've got two quick portraits I made in the dressing room. So this past weekend, the bride and groom were at the same house. He couldn't leave the room because the bride was there. So I had to hurt, and we were running out of time. So I had to do his portraits in the dressing room really quick and I had to use what I had. I didn't have time to go get my big lights and set everything up so I used my little pocket flash and made two cool groom's portraits and I'm gonna show you how I did that right now. So for the first one, this is the behind the scenes of the room. I just took a quick snapshot area. As you can see, messy dressing room, not a lot to work with. It's not like a scenic space. And, and one tip I'll give you about location hacking, any location that you're in, is it doesn't need to be a glamorous space to make good portraits. Now, if it is a glamorous space, use that glamour. But all you need to do is find a clean slice and you can make anything. So no matter what location you're in, if you can find a small, clean slice, you can make a good portrait, especially if you want to use some flashes, then you can get some creativity using your light versus having a epic background. So of course, I would have loved to take them to a really cool location and got some really cool grungy urban photos or something really cool like that, but I didn't have that available. I just have a messy dressing room. So I found this clean wall in the back corner right here, as you can see. Um, I just needed a slice and I actually did a bunch of photos here with some subtle window light first, which will be a separate video, window lights for guys. But then what I did was had the groomsman, uh, the best man hold the flash for me. Cause I said, I'm going to make a cool spotlight effect on him. You could do this with the mag mod with a grid. Uh, but because this is a small flash anyway, it's, it's coming out pretty tight. Um, you don't want, I didn't want it too tight. I wanted it to look like a spotlight on him. Uh, but if you wanted it really tight beam, you could put a grid on it with a mag mod mag grid. And this is the photo that I got. I got a whole bunch of variety of different like poses and stuff, but this was the main edited one. Try to get him a cool pose and got the flat light on his face. So I'll show you the one without the flash. So as you see, without the flash, the light isn't that great. I just wanted a simple, clean, natural light shot to, to start with. And I took some photos like this, but then, you know, it's just not that great. Interesting. So I figured we'll whip out the flash and make something kind of cool. So here's a couple other versions of me playing around with the flash that are unedited. Him looking up into the light, him looking over to the right, um, him taking the behind the scenes one, him standing strong with his hands in the collar. It just He had a really like cool, strong vibe, um, so I wanted to go with that. And as you'll notice that the color is a little bit different. These are all unedited. And then when I started editing it, the, um, it was a little bit blue, white balance. So I said, you know what, let me go with that. I kind of like that blue white balance. So I allowed the temperature to stay a little bit blue. And then I just brushed in some warm on his face. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's one little trick. If you want a little bit of flair and you didn't have time to do any color, you can just kind of brush in a little bit of warmth on the subject. And yeah, here I missed his shoulder back here, as you can see, because the whole photo is a little bit blue white balance. You kind of got to brush in what you want to stay warm. Um, you could also do this with gels in real time and try to kind of keep it blue and then throw a warm flash on them. But usually in a tight space like this, 
it's a lot easier just to do a subtle brush. Now what I would actually do is open it up in Photoshop and get a little bit more precise because as you can see it's like warm over your shoulder. It's a little bit warm here. So it was just a quick edit to show you. You're going to want to spend a little bit more time if you do the split color effect. But anyway, that's the first photo. And secondly, I wanted to do a little bit of an action portrait. So one of the things I like to do is create what I call action portraits where either you're faking action or you're taking action and making it look like a portrait. So really this was actually him in action. This wasn't posed other than I gave him the direction to move his location of what he was doing, what he was doing. So an action portrait is when the bride or groom, the subject is doing something naturally that happens to be um, positioned in such a way that they look photogenic enough that you can kind of be like a portrait. So he kept coming in and out of this room to check his hair, check his collar, do some different things. And so I said, all right, I'm going to prepare for the next time he goes in there to try to get a good candid. And so what I did took my little pocket flash and put it on the floor. So I wanted to get, something a little bit more artsy than just him standing there. And so by having this backlight, it creates something a little bit more interesting. I can kind of make him pop versus this wall and stuff. That's not that interesting. So then when he walked in, I just made sure I told him just to back up two feet while he checked his stuff so that he could be in front of the flash. Then I triggered it. I got my on camera trigger to, uh, also when I take the photo, it flashes the background behind him. Uh, so that there's a bright pocket and that way I can make the foreground darker because I'm exposing for the foreground to be dark and then the light makes a bright pocket and it lights him up because this wall is just bouncing tons of light on him. You, you could also try to make it like a silhouette with that bright pocket um, kind of exaggerating the brightness. Oh, I kind of like this one. All right. And then bring it down the shadows a little bit. Um, the brighter the flash, the easier it is to turn this into a silhouette. Uh, but just by pushing the highlights a little bit, make sure that the bright parts of the frame get brighter and then pulling the shadows down, the dark parts get darker. I actually really like this. Let's do um, maybe black and white. See how that looks? Nah, I the color's okay. Let's get the white balance under control. Yeah, it's a little green. It's, there we go. Well, it almost looks like a black and white just because uh, if he's wearing a white coat. So let's go ahead and go with black and white. There we go. And I'm going to really, since I'm going black and white, I'm really going to pull down the blacks. You got this little picture hanger. I actually, there was a picture on the wall and I took it down. Make sure you put the stuff back when you're done. Sweet. So now I got a little bit of a different look. I'm going to have to play with the perspective a little when I edit it because it's a tiny bit crooked. I have a bad habit of making stuff a little bit crooked. Come here. Sweet. And then I got a, another photo. If you want to see the behind the scenes in action here's a quick video of me taking the picture just so you can kind of see it in action and yeah that's after it's I actually like the silhouette version that i just did live for you a little bit better so i have a natural version for him i don't like to only do silhouettes because the couple's you know, clients like to see their face, you know, even though silhouettes are really cool and artsy, um, they want photos where they can know what they look like. And so now I have one of each, uh, one natural one for him and one kind of artsy one. And what I would do in Photoshop maybe is maybe get rid of this door frame and try to blend it in with this background. Um, maybe I'll try that later, but for now, I think this is a pretty cool, let me center, center him better. Yeah, I think that's a pretty cool. Just from this little light pocket, any any time you find a closet or a, a doorway, a room, anywhere where you can kind of fill up with light, you could do this light pocket effect. So awesome. Thanks for spending a couple minutes with me at the Shutter School. Hopefully you got two little tips. Get yourself a TT350S for your mirrorless cameras and you have a little pocket flash everywhere you go and you can do some cool effects. Again, I'm Josh Rogasso from ShutterSchool.com. Please like, subscribe, Share the video to anybody who you think could learn something about Flash. And I'll see you in the next video.